Hello, everybody, and welcome back to episode number 15 here in the Systematic Factory. We are in our little base here, and the, pretty soon I want to start switching over to a, 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 a base system that we're going to use for later in the game. But for now, we need to do some cleanup work and get some things just settled before we start moving into the next phase. And the first thing I did in order to do that is I installed a new cooling loop. So it starts down here at our industrial block. I have a new cooler put in. This is set to cool things down to 19 degrees at the moment. So it's sending up cool petroleum down here. I have some different places where I just put in some spot cooling. And so if you look, the tile insulated tiles underneath these hydroponic farms are very cold. So that uh, it's leaching some heat off of those. And there is a radiator pipe here that comes up right by where this vent is so it's keeping that area cool same with both of the vents up here but then i also ran a coolant loop up here through our oxygen and this is going to take a long time to get it down to temperature because we've been pumping oxygen in here for a long time but so the area is pretty warm but we don't actually have a huge amount of back stock on oxygen which is um i guess makes a lot of sense based on the fact that we um, have just been sending it directly out instead of accumulating it and sent in things like that. I'm not sure why our uh, take ups are actually picking up oxygen and sending it out. These should be providing enough oxygen to keep the line saturated, but it's working. I'm not going to mess with it. I'm trying to get these voles back to where they're supposed to be because I'm not ready to deal with them, but they, they got off because I had this tile too close. So they jumped across and worked their way up. So I have this set for somebody to move them. Um, the problem is, is that people get the the command to go do it. And then when they do, the vole has moved into a rock and moved somewhere where they're unreachable. And so the command gets canceled and it's kind of annoying, but it is okay. It will get done eventually. Um, we will deal with all these critters in here that I've just been kind of letting do their thing. Eventually we're going to set up some more ranches, but we're going to let this cooling loop do its thing. And the next thing we're going to do, my, my end game goal for right now is to get up here and start working on a petroleum boiler. Um, I also want to tap into the rest of these volcanoes, uh, copying the design we did in the volcano tamer episode. Once I work out all the kinks, I'm actually, this one is going dormant and I'm shutting it down and I'm cooling off everything so that I can do some maintenance on it. Um, that's going to take a while too. But what we need to do before we get to, into petroleum is clean up our oil area down here. So I'm going to do a few things to do that. Uh, but the first thing I want to do is right now we have just carbon skimmers here, clearing up the carbon dioxide, which is going to take probably another, I don't know, 30, 40 cycles to get all through all of this carbon dioxide that built up, maybe less. But once it does, we're going to get all this chlorine built up down here and different things. I want to set up a ventilation system that pretty much collects all the extra gases that come down here and handles them. So we're going to do that first before we start going into here. And then that means we'll be able to get this place um, pumped out as well, more efficiently, and we can start doing some more work on that. This is pretty simple design here that I'm doing. I just did a filter for our gases and I have a pump down here all the way at the bottom that picks up gas and it pumps it into the filter. And I'm sure you've seen me use this filter many times. It's pretty much my go-to, but the, specific reason that I'm using this type of filter is I can filter all kinds of different types of gases and it's uh, it doesn't require power for it to continue to cycle so the the and it does require power which they're finishing up now for the gas shut off to turn on and off and so it won't actually filter any gases without power but the gases that are on the loop will continue to move even if the power goes out so if something happens and I disrupt the power, I don't end up with gases going to the wrong places, which is what I want for here. 
The other thing that means is that if this get, this pump picks up gases that it doesn't know what to do with, they're just going to sit here on this loop. And I'll have to keep, keep an eye out for it so that I can add another filter to handle it. But whatever gas goes on, it will just continue to loop until it finds a home or it will stay on the loop. So the first one I put on is I just did carbon dioxide because that's what we're dealing with at the moment. And also because I already have a carbon dioxide line here. So it was easy to just put on that filter and then connect it to the line going in and send it off to our carbon dioxide storage down here. I did redesign this a little bit uh, with the, I put the gas vents underneath blocks, all four of them with a space in between. Uh, so I have like two vents with a space in between both cover with a block. And then I repeated that. And what that means that the liquid here is always going to stay covering the vent. Even, no matter if it's a little tiny bit or uh, the maximum amount because this liquid does fluctuate and then this one will always stay open like it is so it's never going to go over the point where it blocks. It prevents them from giving the overpressure message periodically which means these pipes can just run full bore in here which is good because I have a highway of carbon dioxide coming from our power plant. The next step I want to do is uh, if you look at our gases we have um, a little bit of oxygen that uh, is coming out of these, but it's not a big deal. And I'm actually going to remove those. The next thing we have is some polluted oxygen, tiny bits, but mostly if we go up, we're going to hit this chlorine patch once it gets all this carbon dioxide out. So I want to set up a space for chlorine. In the past, I had done the chlorine storage here, and that was just a temporary me measure, and it's limited, you know, it's very small. I just want to have a place where I can dump chlorine and forget about it and have pumps to pull it out if I need to use it later on. So what I'm going to do, and I've already set it up to kind of do this, is I'm going to mirror this storage over on the other side here and have it be for chlorine. This area down here is finished being built. I'm using the gas pumps that will are in here for me to pump out chlorine later to empty the carbon dioxide that's in the room before I start storing chlorine in it. Um, this room did not need to be as big as it is. I'm not gonna, I'm, I don't have to have four inputs for chlorine. I definitely wouldn't need two pumps to get it out because chlorine I'm just gonna use in small amounts. At some point in the future, I could have just used any, a small, a much smaller room, but I kind of like the way it looks where it's balanced uh, across here. And the ladder comes up where they can service both of them right underneath this, uh, mesh tile which is there specifically to let the air flow up here to get to this pump oh i have to finish filling this back in because there are some gases collecting up there um so this is collecting up all the carbon dioxide once it gets chlorine it will start pumping it into this room and i can take the other chlorine we have and send it down here at some point but now we have a filtration for both of those We'll keep an eye out and see what comes up next and send up, uh, uh, put in other filters. But basically, the things we're going to get settling down at the bottom are going to be um, uh, like natural gas will settle down here if any gets out into the base. And then we'll put a line here. We'll just feed it up into the power plant. And then we're going to do a probably a return line for oxygen once we get to that point where instead of... Uh, doing any automation where it can detect, detect if there's oxygen down here. I'm just going to have this pump run, and when it has oxygen, it'll just take it from here and take it back up to the um, oxygen storage and let things go from there. And that way, um, yeah, it's going to waste some power. It's not going to be very efficient, but then it, this will just keep moving at gases, and we'll get like a flow of gases. So anything that settles down here will get handled. Um, and then also we'll get polluted oxygen that get picked up in here and we'll have to figure out where we want to send that to. But that's a problem for future Ender. Right now, this will work for the foreseeable future. Uh, so now the next thing we want to work on is start uh, doing an overhaul down here in the oil biome. We want to have this set up so that we have a nice system for getting oil up to our... Um, new petroleum boiler that we're going to be building in the next episode and this would work fine this is producing uh 10 kilograms of oil per second with the water coming in uh but th the 
petroleum boiler is going to consistently burn 10 kilograms per second of oil so these three pumps are going to be the supply for that so what i want to do is i'm going to redesign this so that these are all contained in one uh, closed system and that way i don't need to worry about having a big pool of oil and i can collect it all in this room and automate shut off based on if i get an overflow of oil when the petroleum boiler isn't running and then I can empty this room of, of oil so that we can start cleaning it up and then getting down into the magma biome beneath it without having a risk of oil being here that will flash to petroleum and then to sour gas with the extreme heats we have down here. When we do get into working with the magma, that's when I'm going to get into the Biobot Builder because I think that will be a, a, a fun project to be able to do work down here without risking any duplicates because we can send the biobots down to do the things but first we want to get this set up so that we have that i also want to just work my way across and finish getting in here and digging everything up and clearing this out because there's a lot of oil wells in here I'm, i may not tap into them for a while but i just want to get everything cleaned up and i'm also starting work on closing this off i'm going to collect as much of this uh liquid as i can over to the side here and i'm going to connect it up to this po this pool so that i can just put one pump down here to collect all of that out and then this will all be open to me to use for this area down here so i'm going to do a bunch of work on that and get in this moved over here first and then we'll work on this project together Forgot to show you the best feature of the way I have these infinite gas vents set up. The way they're set up because of the liquid mechanics here, I'm pumping out the polluted oxygen because this it, it polluted oxygen and oxygen got in here before we could finish sealing it up. So if you look, there's some polluted oxygen coming through this pipe. Let's look at the gas overlay. See if I can slow it down so that we can actually catch it happening. So polluted oxygen comes out into this vent. And what it does is it displaces the liquid to either side because polluted oxygen has nowhere to go. Because when carbon dioxide comes in, it doesn't displace all the, all the liquid because it automatically gets pushed diagonally into this tile. Polluted oxygen can't. And so it goes here it can't go here, but the liquid wants its spot back, basically, and it overrides that gas and deletes it. So when there's small amounts of gas being pumped in that are the wrong kind, they just get deleted automatically. And so I don't need to worry about gases getting built up in here if I accidentally pump gas in from the wrong way. And especially in the carbon dioxide one, that's important because up here... This is all carbon dioxide, and it's set to only pump out over 2,000 kilograms. And the reason for that is that the polluted oxygen then can't off-gas. But if for some reason the carbon dioxide dips and it allows this to off-gas, and we were to get polluted oxygen in this room and it get picked up by the intake line for the carbon dioxide, it would be a small amount. And when it got down here, it would just get deleted. So I don't have to worry about gases building up at the top of my... Uh, infinite gas room anymore with this setup it won't work if you send a huge packet like if you were to just do a line where it was a thousand gram, uh, grams of carbon dioxide and then a thousand grams of fluid oxygen i think that might break it because it would put it would displace this liquid and then get up into the system but for our purposes it works great and so this is almost done getting all the gases out of this room and it'll be ready for the chlorine. Again, I don't have to worry about chlorine for a while because it's got to get through all of this carbon dioxide before it gets to it. I did take out the carbon skimmers because they were just deleting carbon dioxide and giving me polluted water. I don't really need the polluted water. I have ways to get more now. And the um, carbon dioxide is just getting picked up here. So in due course, all of this will get... Uh, put into the pump and handled down here Our filter is still doing fine. It just has carbon dioxide in it. So we don't need to worry about that yet Always hitting the wrong key and hitting F instead of D so the food pops up Over here. What I'm working on is I'm just putting in some uh, 
ladders so that we can get up to do piping. Actually, I don't need the ladders up top, I just realized, because they can do the piping from above. So that's good. I don't need any of this either. Um, that's all going to be temporary. I think I'm going to take all these ladders out. Let's cancel all of the, all of the ladders. They're, they're not necessary except for places where I need them. So I do want to get rid of those. So we'll need to put some ladders back here to get to them. This is basically just going to be a temporary tank because eventually all this liquid's going to be gone and then I can recover this area as well. But what we're doing is I have a pump down here that I'm building. I have a power line going to it and a pump, uh, a gas, gas pipe, or not a gas pipe, a liquid pipe with going up to connect it to our existing system and so once we have this built and it's running i'll remove all the other pumps and this will be where we pump our liquid out of so we're trying to get everything to collect down in this corner so we're digging out this area so that this liquid can flow down and once we get this area uh cleared out so that there's no liquids left in here then i will seal this side up to connect to here and let the liquid from above down so that we can start just pumping all of it from one source instead of having multiple pumps in different places. Down here I'm building, I build with tile first and then I build airflow tile over it and that's so that there's, if you just build airflow tile over a natural tile then they'll dig the natural tile first, liquid will get in, and when you put the airflow tile in, because of the pressure, the, the, ga the liquid will be trapped inside that airflow tile. Well, then if you dig underneath, the liquid will fall through, and we don't want that. So we built tiles so that when we put the airflow tiles over, in theory, they will um, overwrite that tile in place, and no liquid will transfer. It's unreachable because they're still digging down here. That's fine. They need to dig all this out before they can get to the rest of the building. But they're working on it and getting all of everything in place. And we'll put airflow tiles all the way up through here to there. So what we need to do is to do a row of these tiles like this. Because again, I don't want to replace airflow tiles over natural tiles because of that work. And then we'll dig this out. And then that means this liquid can flow down here into here. And like I said, once we get all of this liquid pumped out to the point where it's down below here, then I will finish building this wall up and we'll drop the liquid down. And then that way, all of this area, it will be free for us to dig out and start building some things. I completed the pit. We're collecting all of our water down here. This is all built off so that nothing can break through. And I'm removing this section here so that it can all merge together in one pit, letting some of this water spill down here, which will lower it enough that I can work on this volcano in a little while. Um, I did have this little section of salt water and mixed, gas, mixed uh, liquids in here. So I built this wall down, I put a pump in, and I am building a pipe up here to a vent so that we can pump it up into this pit because I didn't want to wait for it to empty out. I wanted to get it done so we can keep going. We'll start clearing everything else out and save this little section for last. Once all the uh, waters have been pumped out, we'll clean it up and get rid of it. It also seals off this room from the gas out here that was going through this airflow tile, which means that this pump that's here collecting gases for us will um, slowly empty this room of all the gases. It's been doing a pretty good job of it. We just have more coming in, so it, was, it could never finish it, but we'll get it all emptied out. I think that actually I should now connect this up to our filter here. That would probably be a pretty good idea because then it can just go in with that without having this filter here that we were using. So I'm going to do that. I'll put in, I'll have to put in some more bridges to get it across to do it, but we'll, we'll get it done. And then we can have just the one filter here running instead of using this one. I don't think that there's, we'll have to deal with the polluted oxygen, but we had to do with that soon anyway. So that's no problem. What's going on here? It's interesting. Is 
There's oxygen in here. There's carbon dioxide above it. And right here, there's a vacuum. I wonder if that's because the liquids are trying to merge with each other through there? I'm going to have to mess around with that and see if it's a pressure thing or what. That could be a really interesting thing to exploit. Anyway, um, as you can see, this is pumping out. It's getting liquids up here. And we can now work down here as everything gets emptied out where we want it to go. Still working on getting this area uh, cleaned up, but we did get all this uh, water moved over into the big pit. So we can, when I took this pump out, we can clean this up too. Uh, we've been digging down here just to clear everything out and make some space and the gases have been getting handled pretty good so everything is going pretty well on this front but now i want to work on this system so what i want to do is have one enclosed system for all three of these oil wells so that they will collect all the oil in one spot we can just have one pump that pulls it out so what i'm going to do is i'm going to enclose this And we also need to build up on this side. And then I'm, what I want to have is a way to get into here that is sealed. So let's see, how do we want to do that? I want to put a ladder down. Let's have the ladder come right against this wall. And then I'm going to have the liquid lock will go like this. And this one doesn't need to be temperature controlled because in the end, this area is going to be a vacuum. So that'll be good. And then I can put bottle emptiers in here to put some oil up here. We still have our oil, our pitcher pump for oil down here. And so once we get all that built, we can have our closed system and then we can start working on, I'm gonna put in a pump here to pump all this oil inside here and set one pump to pump it out. That way I can get rid of all of this. We'll clear up all this oil. And then when we collect oil over here, we can also put it into there. And then the idea is that this system will be, will remove all of this, all of these walls. We'll just have one gas pump in here that pumps the natural gas out. And we'll have one oil pump that pumps the oil out. And then all these systems will continue to work. But let's get it enclosed first. I'm going to have to put in a pump somewhere in here just to pump all the last little bit of carbon dioxide out of here. So the natural gas and the carbon dioxide don't mix. And then we can... Um, worry about starting to remove some of the tiles and get this set up so that it's all for, uh, functioning together instead of a, a, two separate systems. We have our sealed chamber here built up. Once I put this block in, we can turn this off and this off and deconstruct those. And so once that block's in, this room will be sealed and we have this pump is pumping directly into our carbon dioxide storage because all the gas in here is carbon dioxide. I don't need to worry about a filter of any kind. Uh, I also set up the pumps. So there was a pump here, I got rid of it. Now the pump is down here. And the way I have it is this is pumping up and it's taking priority sending oil up to our petroleum system. And this pump here, is currently running a line to bypass to the secondary. So once this one is empty, we'll still start sending oil. That way I don't have to monitor it. I can just let it go and do its thing. The next thing I wanna work on, I have to wait for all this carbon dioxide to get pumped out, which won't take long. But while we're waiting for that to happen, I'm gonna work on a little bit of automation. And so I'm gonna put a hydro sensor on this level. And then I'm going to run a wire from that to here, here, and 
and to here. Wondering if I should do those with steel. I don't think the temperatures in here are going to be hot enough that it'll cause a problem either way. So I'm just going to use lead because it's cheaper. And we can always switch them later if we do run into a problem. But so what this is going to do is it's going to allow these oil wells to run until we get a back, backlog of oil that goes up to this height. I might change where that's located in the future, but when we start working on moving the removing the walls to allow all the natural gas out the one thing we do need to take into consideration is that any of these radiant liquid pipes need to be submerged in oil if any of these don't have oil around them so like this one has that spot there and then these have the little tiny bit that's above here because it, it can't go below that because of this if any of them are exposed the natural gas comes out hot enough that it boils the water in the pipe and then it cracks and then I get steam and then I get water in my oil. I do not want. So I do want to move this in to here because I don't need it to be as long. So the first thing we need to do is to change this pipe up. And I'm thinking I might actually, let's see. Now let's just keep it with the radiant pipes. I'm actually gonna, or insulated pipes. I'm gonna use some ceramic in here. I have plenty of it. I don't think it's necessary, but I'd rather not find out if it is. And so I'm gonna go all the way to here with insulated pipe. I think that that'll be plenty. Why did these stop? Oh, disabled by automation grid. Once the hydro sensor gets put in, it will be fine. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the insulated tile up to here. This one will be like this one where it fills up to above the radiant pipes and then it spills over. And then I'll take this wall out. This one will spill out on both sides. And this I can remove. It will all come down to here. And uh, this one I can just take the roof off. And then all of these will fill up oil to here. The reason I'm going to do... The hydro sensor here instead of just all the way at the top and let the thing fill with oil is that I'm concerned about natural gas spilling over into or getting trapped here when the oil fills up. So there'll be natural gas down here at this level. As the oil comes up, it'll, it might make a bubble in the corner and that would cause some pressure issues. I also think I might... I might close this up th right here and just make a wall like this. And then that way this oil well will just fill up to this point and they'll both spill over. Because then that way this can fill up a little higher too. Yeah, let's do that. But Okay, so we just need to get these last few things put in. The main thing is I need to wait for all this carbon dioxide to come out before I crack these open. Because like I said, I do not want to have these um, gases mixing. So it's just going to take a few more uh, cycles to get all of this carbon dioxide pumped out and put into storage. And we can continue to get this oil pumped out down here. In the end, what I want is a sealed system here with the natural gas in it that we can pump out to the um, natural gas generators. And then a closed system for the oil as well. So we can pump that out to the petroleum generators. And outside here, I want it to be a vacuum and no oil down here because I want to work on doing some things where I get into the magma. And I definitely do not want to have either gases around it that will heat up and cause problems or even worse, crude oil down here that if I spill it into the wrong place, it'll flash straight to sour gas. And then I got to deal with that. So that's the whole plan here to get this contained in here. In the future, we may work on doing more of these oil wells if we have like a second boiler which is it is in my plans but down the road getting one up and running is the first priority tapped into our room here because all the carbon dioxide has been pumped out and we are just getting ready to get everything here opened up. These are over pressure because they've been sitting that way for a little bit. So we're pumping a lot of gas out. So the first thing is I'm going to remove this wall. So basically this one will fill up with oil. It'll spill over into this one and both of them will spill oil down into here. 
the oil well has no problem sitting underneath uh, oil down here. Oh, we have pressure damage, though. That's going to be a problem. All right, well, let's let that go for a second and see what happens. Hmm. So that's going to be an issue. With all the gas coming out, it doesn't have anywhere to go, so it's causing pressure damage from the liquid down here. I think that I have an idea of how to fix that, but it's going to be a pain. But that only happens when we're emptying the oil well. All right, let's 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 get the rest of this open up, and then I'll try to fix that and see if we can figure it out. So we're going to open this room up. I, 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 can, I can do this all at once because they can reach from below. Um, at least for those. This is five tiles up. So then we'll just do those two there, and then we'll get the last two. That's going to open this one up to let the gas out into here. And then we're going to remove this pump. And we'll just have this one pumping gas out. That way we don't have to have the two different lines. We don't have to have power to both of them. This, this pump will take out plenty because these aren't providing natural gas constantly. Okay, good. They're going to be able to reach all that and get those last couple. Then let's do these two. And we can do these. We can all reach from the ladders. Perfect. And then what we can do is we can extend this ladder all the way down to the floor. I'll make sure that's out of granite. That'll be fine. So as far as this goes, um, what I'm thinking is I'll do another row of insulated tiles underneath. And then I'll get down in here and I'm going to replace these tiles with airflow tiles. And then it'll open up to here. It'll let natural gas in there. And so we'll have some um, spacing between the liquid and the wall. And I think probably, I don't know that we'll have pressure damage on the sides, but for aesthetic reasons, I think we should do that all the way up the wall just to make it balanced. And then let's do it the whole way around the bottom as well because it'll look, I just think it'll look better. Sometimes I worry about efficiency. Sometimes I worry about um, aesthetics. Sometimes I try to balance it. So we'll put all that in, and then once that's in, we'll switch all these uh, insulated tiles on the inside for airflow tiles. And that'll let the natural gas flow through and create a barrier for the liquid all the way around. We could probably do the same for these tiles here because we can have natural gas building up underneath here. That'll be fine. And we have success. So we just vented this oil well. No pressure problems because the airflow tile allows for things to um, allows for the gas to get around the oil and it protects the tiles from damage. I didn't go around the top because there's not going to be ever any liquids up there, so it doesn't matter. This side I went all the way to the edge and this side up to the edge just for aesthetic purposes. Um, again, it's they're never going to have oil that high. The oil will stop at this level. I also moved the wiring all to the edges it's like the uh, automation goes around this way and up uh, we're finishing just putting these last couple wires in and the same with the power wires they come around the sides and go up this part will eventually come off once we get all this oil out so it's nice and clean i'm probably going to end up running this wire up through the top to connect to power up here because once we get all the gases out of here these are going to have problems overheating uh, though I could solve it with a little bit of liquid. We'll see what I decide to do there. But the system's all working great. I also re-ran the water to go around through the tiles on the outside. Um, with the granite pipes, 
it would have been fine to go through the middle the heat wouldn't have been an issue but it just looks cleaner when you see the build without having all the pipes running right through the middle and i also really like the the footprint with the airflow tiles it makes it just kind of nice and crisp the last thing i want to do to finish this up is to sweep out the bottom of it and so let's sweep out the bottom of this part as well and then this can be uh pretty much just done for the foreseeable future everything here should just keep running as long as i send water in and i have power to it it'll produce this oil and between the three of these oil wells it'll produce exactly 10 kilograms per second and when we build our petroleum boiler that's how much it's going to use so this one system will supply us with all the petroleum for that or all the oil we need for that one boiler and that will be great these slicksters can just hang out in here they're, they're not going to last for long because there's no carbon dioxide for them um, and this will fill up until it gets to this point here uh, with these airflow tiles i could probably actually go up all the way higher and I might mess around with that and see, because even if we get a bubble here, it's not going to cause any pressure problems. But what I'm worried about is if the oil goes up to here, it'll push a little bubble of gas here. And again, it's not going to break anything, but I just don't like the way it'll look. So I might remove this and move it up higher and see how that does, but mostly I'll just let it go. This is going to continue running and fill it up with oil till it hits to here and it's going to stop and then it won't kick back on until this all gets emptied because this pump has priority. Yeah. And currently we have two petroleum refineries, just manual ones up here so that we're producing 10 kilograms a second of petroleum, but it's very inefficient because we have to wait for duplicates to run it and each of these only produces half the petroleum that you make with oil when i build an actual proper petroleum boiler we'll get uh 100 back but for now that'll do the job and uh we'll get the working on the petroleum boiler it is going to have to wait until after the uh the holidays when i get back from my holiday vacation because i just won't have time to do it but we are going to build a petroleum boiler up here that is a a big project on the horizon for now let's call this a day we did a great job with this we still need to do some work clearing out in here but we're getting there and i hope you enjoyed watching it and we'll see you in the next one Bye bye